Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. I am Trace. This is episode 2 of 5 on Oceans. Make sure you watch yesterday's episode where we gave you the rundown of how big the oceans are and how they got salty. But today we're going to talk a little bit about how we learn about the oceans. So, we kind of had a vague idea of what is in the ocean in terms of its physical structures, right? What the seafloor might look like. And we know that the ocean contains the largest mountain ranges on Earth, for example. Canyons, which would make the Grand Canyon look like a dinky little thing. And cliffs with three or four mile drops off of the edge of them. These are huge things. They're all under the water. We also know that the word bathymetry is the measurement of the depth of water. Fun fact for you, it's a great word. People say that we explore more space than we do the ocean. But that's not really true. I mean, yes, NASA's budget is larger. It's $18 billion in 2015. And the Senate bill for NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, that's only $456 million proposed for 2015. But NASA's includes billions for Earth sciences, which is where space points down at the ground. We get ocean observations, we get weather satellites, all of that helps us learn about the oceans, even though it's technically in NASA's budget. In 2013, oceanographer David G. Gallo said that we've explored less than 10% of this planet, maybe even less than 5%. But only a couple years later now, in 2015, that is not completely accurate. There's been huge breakthroughs in the last couple of years in ocean exploration. First, NOAA came out with a 3D interactive map last year in 2014. They actively update the map, and they've looked at less than 10% of the ocean floor through this map using survey data dating back to 1937, and they combine sonars, they combine radio waves, and mapping of ships that are going in straight lines across the ocean, right? So they get like about 10% of the ocean floor that way. But then they added satellite radar altimeter data, which made this map incredible. The satellites repeatedly scanned the water's surface, and they corrected for waves and for tides, and then they used a picture of the sea surface that reflected the sea floor below. They did that by looking at how gravity pulls on seawater. So the seamount exerts gravitational pull on sea surfaces. So what happens is they map the bottom of the ocean by just looking at how gravity changes the sea surface. It's kind of complicated, but it's so cool. And now the map is twice as accurate as past surveys and endless more regions of the ocean have been mapped using this system. Now we're starting to pinpoint previously unknown ridges and shelves, volcanoes, all sorts of things that exist underneath the ocean surface. Uh, and there's a lot of them, but one of many examples that was previously unknown is an 800 kilometer long ridge in the South Atlantic Ocean that formed after Africa and North America rifted apart. Super cool. We learned this because we started taking all this data and putting it together. And we've gotten even better than that because in 2015, the University of Sydney's School of Geosciences created a digital map of seafloor geology. They took 15,000 seafloor samples taken over a half of a century and they generated the map. It's the first time that this has been mapped in 40 years. Originally, they were using a hand-drawn map from the 1970s. Everybody was just using this map that some dude drew out. And now we've got this digital map that combines all of these different samples. They learned so much just from creating these resources. Another example, because there's a lot, but we're just going to have one, is that it was believed, until they did this, that the ocean around Australia was mainly covered by clay. Boring. You know, who cares? But it turns out it's actually a complex patchwork of microfossil remains, and it all surrounds that continent. Super cool, and now we know. But even with all this new information, we still don't have a super detailed view of what is underneath the surface of our oceans. It's kind of like, I don't know, think of it like a Christmas present, right? It's all wrapped up, and you kind of make out the general shape, but it's not like we can get in there and shake it, right? More research is definitely needed to find out what is going on inside of the ocean's wrapping paper. But let me break it down just a little bit. Yes, NASA has a bigger budget, but we've explored, you know, 5 to 10% of the oceans as of 2013. We have not explored 5 to 10% of space, not even 5 to 10% of our solar system. Plus, without NASA, we don't have satellites that look back at the ocean. We don't have these satellite maps that can look at the seafloor and map gravitational changes and things. It's a win-win. We're working together in this, guys. You know, 
Wait till we have to go to Europa with like a spaceship, literally like a space boat. We're gonna need ocean knowledge for that too, so they're just gonna keep working together. And it's crucially important that we gain more information about the world's oceans. We can understand then how climates are changing and affecting the oceans, which will ultimately affect us. Tune in tomorrow to more Test Tube Plus so that you can find out the answers to that. And make sure you subscribe so that you get all of our videos in your inbox every single day. You can also come find us on Twitter if you wanna talk about it. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna play with these two maps, they are publicly available and they're incredible. Like think, you know, Google Maps, but for under the ocean, it's really cool. We'll put the links down in the description. And also tell us if you have any other cool resources about learning about the ocean, you can put those in the comments too. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. Wow.